Today I want to talk to you about a couple of examples of the plug and play module. The plug and play module is a Node.js library that allows you to create plugins that uh, will allow you to leverage polymorphism. A good example of this that I have used in the past and uh, this is working in my, my current project is that we have a process that ingests some data from the AWS SQS service. AWS SQS, for the ones, for the people that doesn't know uh, what it does, um, it's a service uh, by Amazon that, that allows you to receive messages from a queue. It's a distributed queue. Uh, you don't necessarily know who puts the messages in the queue, and uh, you just uh, listen for the queue and can then get messages. Um, so this works uh, really well and this goes into production, but whenever we have a we have a bug that we want to debug uh, and it happens to have uh, special data in it. It is very convenient to have an alternative to load messages in the system that is not SQS because uh, otherwise we need to feed our, C, uh, our AWS SQS instance with debug messages which can be uh, cumbersome and uh, you may waste time in the interim because uh, you may need to do uh, repeated tests while you're fixing or identifying the bug. So the idea was that we should be able to replace the polling mechanism for these messages by in debug, debug mode or in our locals by just reading from disk. And uh, we identified two main functions that these plugins would have. One for, uh, we would have one plugin for SQS and one plugin from for disk. Uh, and these two methods would be poll to get the list of message IDs and then the actual load by load message by ID. And uh, I will not get into the actual implementation of these modules, but just hint uh, how you would do it. Uh, so there may be things that are actually incorrect, uh, but hopefully you will get the, the idea on why we chose plug and play and uh, how that's uh, working well for us. And uh, the last thing that you may want to know is that uh, one of the requirements that we de decided that it would be nice to have is that we only deploy the SQS code to production and we have the debug plugin in a separate code base that is called uh, whatever the project name is underscore debug and that provides the the plugins uh, for debugging purposes and that goes into the dev dependencies and therefore is not uh, deployed as part of, of our artifact to production so uh, this is uh, how you would do it so um, in here uh, I created this plugin samples uh, module uh, this you know has both plugins in the same code base but um, it would be the same if you have it had these in separate code bases because plug and play can discover your plugins inside of your uh, third party modules folder so uh, you have one for one plugin from disk and one plugin to read from SQS and I went ahead and created the uh, the YAML files uh, these are very simple and this is very simple as well uh, so Oops, uh, I have a typo here. Um, I went ahead and I created uh, the loader for uh, disk. And this is basically uh, just going to uh, import the loader base from plug and play. And it's going to return these two methods uh, in, the, in the loader. So, uh, so yeah, that's uh, that's basically it. Uh, actually, in fact, I need to wrap this into a promise. Resolve, and that should be it. Uh, so let's uh, let's first think a little bit of uh, how this was done, and then we can all together do the other example. 
So basically, when we're pulling for from disk in our local while debugging, what we do is we fake the polling by reading from a by reading from a from a file that contains a list of other files, and those other files contain the actual messages, and those messages represent what SQS has uh, in in the queue. So then we sec sequentially load messages uh, one after one after the other. Uh, so so basically, uh, we assume that the options that the instantiate method is gonna is gonna pass in uh, we get these those options uh, as parameter and then uh, you know there is a key called manifesto with uh, with the name of the file that contains all the other files uh, and it may be uh, a JSON file so uh, something like uh, let me provide an example of what I mean uh, Oops. Maybe something like this. Uh, so you get the the idea. So this is the manifesto. And then uh, we could have another folder, another directory called debug messages, and then those, then uh, that would have message one, the JSON. This is the actual message. Uh, I don't know. Uh, we have a body key, maybe, and some properties. Oops. Maybe something similar to that. So uh, coming back to the loader, uh, it will provide the poll and it will read all the the files to load, and that would give you message one, an array of message one, two, three, four, and then to load the message by ID. It just requires the ID because it's a, a JSON. Uh, this is a very straightforward implementation and uh, it's a, an oversimplification, but uh, I think it's good for the, the example. So basically uh, what goes next is just uh, going to implement the from SQS loader.js. So uh, we chose that file name going to use that module export equals class and oops I'm gonna sorry I'm gonna hide that it's tense and from here we're going to const plugin loader base oops require plug and play Right, right on, uh, and then uh, oh, export options, and and then the actual method, and it would be like something like uh, first, uh, let's now imagine and this is not the actual uh, SDK but uh, that we use the Amazon SDK and uh, call that SQS SDK require made up uh, module AWS SDK SQS and uh, then we first uh, get a client, uh, get client from the option options, and we provide the key and 
the secret of our AWS account. And again, this is just uh, me making up an, an API call. So, you know, it is uh, simpler to provide an implementation. And we need to return a promise. So get client returns a promise and eventually it gives us a client. So I'm gonna assume this and then uh, and then with the client we're gonna do the polling and the loading messages. And uh, that's gonna be it. We're gonna just return an object that says poll and then client dot poll. Oops. And then uh, load message by ID. This options and ID. Uh, uh, uh. Yep, sorry. There we go. Uh, return client pull. Oops, I don't actually, I don't need to return. Uh, IT, uh, not that. Ugh. Okay. So let's imagine that this client provides us uh, this way. Actually, SQS doesn't provide a way to load by ID, uh, but let's let's pretend because it's a good example. So basically, uh, this will get a client, and then uh, it's going to return a poll function and a load message by ID function, and that is going to uh, use the the client, and then that that should be that should be all. Uh, it is a simplified example again, um, but uh, you can see how this at the end of it, this plugin is going to return an object, a promise that con uh, that resolves into an object that contains a poll and a load based message by ID method. And you don't really care uh, which one you're calling, uh, so you're just uh, going to have to resolve or choose one plugin or the other to, to do that. And how you would do this, uh, it's a little bit up to you. I like to use the uh, config module and uh, maybe in my local.yaml do something like uh, have a section for the puller and I have uh, the disk configuration and then the SQS configuration and uh, the disk configuration has the manifest Oop. the manifesto file uh, which maybe is I don't know uh, we said it was it's sample one manifest Festo.json and then SQS has key then secret. Then your your secret. So um, basically I have all the options in my in my config files and then I always have uh, something like Oops. Active plugin. And in my local, I want to use disk. So I'm going to use disk. But in my in production, it's always going to be set to SQS. Uh, so the code that uses plugins uh, would be my app.js file and uh, it would be uh, something like I don't know imagine that uh, you 
you have the uh, the process that runs this and it, you would need the plugin manager to discover the plugins and then uh, and then use them so it would be something like cans oops plugin manager require a, a, a plug and play and add a, then you can create a new manager cons manager new plugin manager and then uh, provide the options uh, these options are documented in the github repository page uh, uh, down below at uh, the root path and uh, allow contributed uh, I'm not gonna get into into that for this example so it would be manager dot discover then once all the plugins have been discovered you are good with that uh, you do something like manager instantiate and then uh, this is uh, something that I that I like to do and oh I need the const config it will require config the config module and uh, I need to to pass in the plugin ID and uh, just remember that we used the plugin IDs how we use this oh I need to make this low case and uh, so it's disk and this matches I made it lower case so this matches this uh, so I probably need to make the other one lower case as well uh, there we go so this matches this uh, and uh, most importantly this so uh, I'm gonna do gonna go back to the app.js and I'm gonna say config get uh, pull oops pull polar active plugin and uh, this will give me either uh, depending on the environment uh, this will give me either disk or uh, SQS uh, so uh, gonna move this to a variable uh, something like plugin ID and then I need to pass in the options and uh, this is what the export is gonna receive so it's gonna be config dot get up 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 polar dot and then uh, I need to use either yeah so let me explain in a sec so this is going to instantiate a plugin uh, either called either disk or SQS and this is going to get all the options that need to be passed to the plugin so if this gets resolved to disk so the config module is going to go to uh, the config module is going to be going to this so it's going to return an object with manifesto in it if it's resolved if this is resolved to SQS the config module is going to give key and secret so that's exactly what uh, the options uh, the options object expects in here so for this it expects manifesto and from SQS loader it expects the key and secret so yeah in there once you have the uh, just return return this it returns a promise and then you have the the polar and you can just start polling uh, 
export pull and do some stuff with it and then you can do something like load message by ID and then provide an ID from the the polling and you know just use this and in production this is uh, going to uh, be using SQS and in your local this is going to use the the disk and you have the same code base and just you know you can swap uh, that in and out uh, very seamlessly and you don't have to provide uh, a lot of you know QA instructions and uh, complicated SQS override methods you just uh, you know use your disk for for your debugging so that's um that's a use case that um, I've ran into and this you know can be used for uh, many different things like uh, every time that you think that you want to have a polymorphism and swap in and out a service uh, you can use plugins uh, just like I did this example for reading from a queue I'm also writing to s3 and sometimes I just want to get a glance of what I'm writing to so what I do is I write a plugin I create a plugin that can write to S3 or write to disk or just write to the console and I can debug uh, easier because it's just a YAML change in my configuration file uh, in here I just change the active plugin from SQS to disk in in my local installation so that's it thank you <laughs>